Salam hormat and a uh, very good afternoon to Yang Berbahagia Dato' Azrin Abdullah, Chairman Pride Foundation Malaysia, Dr. Kenichiro Hatsumi, Chairman Hatsumi International Research Foundation USA and Founder and Chairman of uh, ICVS Tokyo Clinic Japan, Mr. Vincent Chang, uh, CEO HITV Laboratories in Riyam uh, Dr. Bae Cho Kim, Director, Mahamaru International Medical Centre. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll have Professor Dr. Nolia who will be joining us uh, in a moment. She's on the way. She's a Professor in Surgery and Consultant of the UKM Medical Centre. And uh, I think she's been doing clinical trials using the uh, HITV therapy. Very good afternoon. And thank you all for being here today. Thank you uh, for making time on a Sunday. And um, on behalf of HITV Laboratories in Riyam Rahad, HITV Lab, and Pride Foundation, uh, we welcome you. And um, before we begin I, on, on the program, I think you saw that uh, Professor Dr. S. Fadila Abdul Wahid was scheduled to speak, but unfortunately, she was unable to join us today due to some urgent matters. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here today because of a new chance for cancer patients, a new hope in cancer treatment in the form of the Hasumi uh, immunotherapy therapeutic vaccine. The work of one man, Dr. Kenichiro uh, Hatsumi from Japan, who's dedicated his whole life and is still dedicating his life to it, 40 years of work uh, to to try and cure, if I may use that word, cancer. And we're here today to share with you this therapy and to share with Malaysians and to share with the rest of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the incidence of cancer today has escalated to epidemic proportions and it's affecting nearly one in every two men and more than one in every three women. And according to the National Cancer Society, there are about 40,000 new cancer cases diagnosed each year. And in 2014, it was estimated that 21,700 deaths in Malaysia were related to cancer. And certainly such statistics are frightening. And um, we always hear, uh, we learn about people that we know and who are close to us who have been afflicted um, with the dreaded Big C. The objective of today's forum is to uh, inform, to create awareness and to educate as many Malaysians as possible about the new dimension, this new dimension in cancer treatment, which is immunotherapy. And what is immunotherapy, you may ask? Immunotherapy for cancer is the use of the patient's own immune system uh, to fight the cancer. Today, we'll learn more about this treatment protocol, the Hasumi protocol, called the Hasumi Immunothera Immunotherapeutic Vaccine, or HITV for short. And, um, and of course, it's named after the uh, visionary researcher and physician, Dr. Kenichiro Hasumi, who developed it. And, um, and I'll leave you uh, all that uh, to the experts to explain to you in more detail. Before I invite our distinguished uh, guests on stage, let's take a look at a special video presentation. The uh, cancer patients will, uh, in that video, they will share with you the experience uh, using uh, with, with, the, with cancer and with uh, HITV treatment. Let's take a look. I had breast cancer. By the time they gave me treatment, I was stage four. The first opinion was to have a double mastectomy, even though the lump was at 2 cm. The, the alternative treatment was going really well until um, six months ago, when one tumor started appearing very, very aggressively, and I was told to have a mastectomy. 
for me, that was horrifying. It's completely invasive surgery and mastectomy and stuff. And Dr. Bay understood that. I was shown figures from Dr. Hasumi that uh, even fourth stage um, patients um, had lumps that had totally disappeared after treatment. That was very convincing for me too, without damaging their bodies. Within a week of the treatment, already you could feel the lumps going down really fast. And to this date, every day I feel they're going lower and lower and smaller and smaller. I chose to undergo immunotherapy because I was convinced that it was the way to go because it increases your immune system, it supports the body to fight the cancer itself. Um, and now that that's 2% um, left, I think that's a very convincing sell. I'm very happy with that. This is the best treatment we have. My wife is having breast cancer. The condition has deteriorated to stage four. She has both on her neck, on both sides of the things like big as a horn. There's a lot of big patches of things. And then she has the centrum. She has the infection uh, of a cancer, which is a big uh, tumor on the head. We chance upon in a small ad in a newspaper that a, there was a seminar organized by XUKM in collaboration with HIT. That's how we discovered HIT. Some others, before that, we also tried so many things already, so we also cannot work. So we, the last then we try and see this one, see whether it can help me or not. So we starting the time is very good and no other side effect. Ah, so the pain also every time will less and less until the end, ah, then the, all the tumor all gone already. Go for one more time the PET scan, so every, all the tumor all gone already. So everything all clear already. Thank you Dr. Bay, the HITV and the immune cell. So I didn't feel any side effect huh, during the treatment time. Or we, for one, feel that at this moment, HITV is a real answer to any cancer treatment. I'd now like to invite on stage uh, your panelists. Uh, please welcome Dr. Kenichiro Hasumi, Chairman, Hasumi International Research Foundation USA, 
and founder and chairman of ICVS Tokyo Clinic Japan. And of course, he's the man who developed the HITV、uh, vaccine. And also on stage is、uh, Dr. Bae Cho Kim, director of Mahamero International Medical Center. And please welcome. Uh, professor Dr. Norli Abdullah, Professor in Surgery and Consultant, UKM Medical Center. I'd just like to acknowledge that uh, uh, the patient on the video, Ms.、Uh, Mrs. Chui Lai Kin, and her husband, Mr. Lai Ah Chong, they're here today.、Oh, where are you,、uh, Ms. Lai Kin? Oh, there you are. Thank you for joining us today. In a minute, I will invite、um, Dr. Hasmi to present、um, uh, something to you. Let me introduce him.、Uh, Dr. Hasmi specializes in cancer immunotherapy and, as I mentioned earlier, has dedicated、uh, more than 40 years、uh, of his life in finding a cure.、Uh, he's made it his lifetime mission to conquer all cancers. As, as much as possible. And over the last 20 years, Dr. Hasmi has initiated numerous research projects, including joint research with the Jilin Provincial Cancer Hospital in China and joint research with Thomas Jefferson University in the US. He's also established in the US the K. Hasumi Research Fund and Laboratory to facilitate cancer research and、um, uh, also to promote、uh, with the Shukoka International the Hasumi vaccine.、Um, Overseas.、Uh, ladies and gentlemen,、uh, please welcome onto the stage、uh, Dr. Hasmi. Thank you very much for the、uh, introduction. And I'm very pleased to、uh, explain about an HITV.、Uh, this treatment. Uh, it's uh, developed in 15 years ago. And I just、uh, cared for one patient in、uh, stomach cancer recurrent、um, metastasis to liver. The liver metastatic size is、uh, over 12 centimeters. And after、uh, dendritic cell injected into tumors, and after one week, and this diameter is decreasing size. and Uh, down regulated to 8 centimeters. It is the first case of this HITB. And now we are starting clinical trials.、Uh, five years ago, we started in、uh, University of Maryland,、uh, head and neck、uh, department. And then two years ago, here、uh, with UKM,、uh, Dr. Fadera、uh, is、uh, specialized on、uh, lymphoma. Uh, this department is also inter interested in this HITB, and now we are starting clinical trial. And last year,、uh, today presented, and、uh, Dr. Noria、uh, in the breast cancer department also starting together、uh, trials. And this year,、uh, we are also planning to start in Taiwan University and head and, head and neck department, and also Beijing. Um, uh, breast cancer in, uh, at a、uh, military hosp hospital. And also, UM, University of Maryland.、Uh, we, we are starting lung cancer and also、uh, head and neck and breast cancer. And also, today, I brought here some slides and focused on breast cancer. And、uh, I summarized slides. So, we have so many. so... And、uh, this conference organizer asked me to shrink and very make simple. So it is, I made some、uh, slide and will be skip. And but after that,、uh, please ask me for discussion.、Uh, I'd like to start and you know, for explanation about an HITV.、Um, this is.、Uh, Japanese data of the,、uh, the cause of death is the top is now is cancer. And second one is heart disease. And third one is pneumonia. And also 
uh, brain vascular disease, apoptosis, and uh, next one is accident, and also next one is suicide, and next one is liver disease and tuberculosis. This is also uh, cancer morbidity you know, on aging. And in Japan, it's uh, two times high for men's death. And cancer diagnosis and aging, and cancer is young age, this is related to heredity. And cancer in over middle age related to lifestyle. And annual health checkups is needed over 40 years old, and also cancer prevention necessary over 50 years old. And also immunofunction will be goes down over 80 years old. This is uh, we, how we are spending meaningful life. Yeah. And the first three are we are health, and then uh, yearly checkups, health checkups, and when we diagnose and cancer, and then we are starting to uh, conventional treatment. Oh, sorry. Um, this is stage one, is a five year survival, is over 90%, and stage two is also over around 70%. In stage three, uh, this is a high risk of the recurrent. Uh, this is 50%. In stage four patient, uh, is around only 20% for five, five years survive. And also, natural death is uh, maybe happened over 80 years old. And then we are stage one, two, three, is that we are follow up for in the secondary preventive vaccine. This is preventive vaccine. It is not to happen, the no recurrent. So uh, basically we are disease free. But sometimes happens for recurrent, and then we are going to uh, palliative care or therapeutic vaccine. And also stage four. Stage four means uh, this is a primary, primary tumors already metastasis to other organs. And it is very difficult to cure. And then also we are going to the selection of the palliative care or therapeutic vaccine. Uh, this is sample stage four. It's a primary you know, tumors in lung, and then metastasis to other organs, in the lymph node, in the other bone, and uh, sometimes in also same in lung and liver. But please note, it is very key issues about these tumors is, uh, it is a little bit different. So primary tumors, it happens in lung, then metastasis to other organ. Each Metastatic site is differentiate and express a different antigen so that uh, we are using a chemotherapy and also radiation therapy. But uh, these kind of conventional uh, treatment is uh, there is some limitation because the cancer cell is now um, changing the uh, surface antigen as a transforming. So that I have, if I have metastasis in uh, supraclavicular lymph node and also uh, liver metastasis, these two kind of metastasis is maybe uh, different tumors. Um, absolutely uh, primary in from lung, but uh, these different uh, uh, circumstance and environment is quite different. So cancer cell is uh, differentiated in one by one. So uh, this HITV treatment, the basic idea is uh, this 
dendritic cell. Uh, it's a we are prepar preparation in uh, uh, doing a leukoaphoresis, and then this dendritic cell is intratumoral injection in one by one each tumor, uh, because this dendritic cell can learn about uh, cancer cell surf cell surface membranes antigen can study, and then uh, also leading to produce in you know, CTL. So many cancer cells in blood flow, this is uh, advanced cancer cell uh, stages. So I have several metastases, and then at the same time, many cancer cells exist in blood flow. And also many tumor sites in the various organ, and also no possibility of operation, as you know. And the limitation of systemic regulation, such as uh, chemotherapy, and also molecular target therapy. And also limitation of local regulation, such as uh, radiation therapy, is not available. And also under condition, if immuno, uh, it's a function in the body, is also under suppression. These many factors in, uh, is listed in an uh, advanced uh, in a patient. This is dendritic cell. And the function of dendritic cell is the di digestion and the recognition of cancer antigens. And this, if dendritic cell it goes into tumors, and then this is recognized in uh, uh, it's a cancer antigens in during around 24 hours. And after that, we are uh, sending um, memory T cell. Uh, this is here and making memory of antigens informed by dendritic cell. So dendritic cell can learn antigen in the tumors, and after one day, we are administrating for through the, uh, intravenous, and uh, we are sending a memory T cell. So it's education and memory. It, it is very basic ideas of this immunotherapy. This scheme uh, is uh, uh, this. There, are, there is some bridges for uh, information transfer from dendritic cell to memory T cell. This is antigen. It is digested up from cancer cell membrane and making uh, some peptide. This cancer peptide is digested by dendritic cell, and then it is sent to memory T cell. And also, this is uh, LPS, and uh, something like a DNA and the lipoprotein. Uh, these stimulate the uh, toll-like receptors, and then this is stimulate in dendritic cell function. So these kind of uh, is a substance. It's called adjuvant. And this is uh, a cancer cell. And after that, we are injecting a then we take cell into tumors, and after 24 hours, we are uh, also administrating through intravenous, and then the dendritic cell and memory T cell in contact with each other, and then dendritic cell is uh, studied uh, is a peptide antigen is sent to memory T cell, and after that, um, around three weeks later, in the automatically this CTL. I need to start to produce.
And this CTL in also uh, it is uh, injecting an, uh, uh, its interferon into a cancer cell. And then cancer cell will be uh, apoptosis. We are now it's uh, compared in patient own autologous cancer cell. And another, this is in culture, same uh, cancer cell, such as uh, stomach cancer cell lines. And then, as you see, in the blue line is autologous. It is very strong activity for uh, it's a killer activity. So we are starting now vaccination phase uh, using a dendritic cell. And also we are combining in multiple radiation therapy. And then these tumors will starting to produce CTL. The CTL, it is start to produce in each tumors. And then these tumors is going to apoptosis. And at the same time, these uh, killer T cell is going to uh, peripheral blood. And uh, many advanced cases in already existing tumor cell in the blood flow. So that new metastasis happens and again and again. So the key point is we should delete a cancer cell in blood flow. If we can delete the cancer cell in blood flow, we did not happen to new metastasis. So uh, we are, before treatment, we are checked up by PET-CT or any other imaging procedure, and uh, it is, uh, uh, it says pick up in how many tumors in uh, metastasis, and then we are direct injection into tumor in the dendritic cell, and then next day uh, this is uh, also uh, administration uh, is a memory T cell through intravenous, and after three four weeks, and uh, the CTL start to produce. And after that, the CTL kill the uh, cancer cell in the blood flow. But we are now it happens a new tumors in the future. But these new tumors can delete by this CTL. So we are uh, isolated around 200 ml a milliliter of uh, peripheral blood, and then isolate in the CTL, and then we are. Uh, if you exp expand the number of these CTL, and then the CTL and inject into new tumors, and then new tumors is gone. So that in final, uh, it is a uh, complete response we can get. So this is a uh, first step of the purpose of CTA production of HITB. Oh, first is dendritic cell and uh, memory T cell and synthesization and making memory of cancer antigens. And then start with uh, so local, for local regulation using by radiation. And after that, we do the same procedure in dendritic cell and memory T cell. It is Maybe their core time, maybe three weeks. So just three weeks later, and uh, we wait in four weeks, and then start produce CTL in treated site. And the second step purpose of CTL maintenance, then we are isolate and CTL isolation, uh, CD8 positive T cell, and expand the number of cells and the store. And then CTL administration in new tumors in intratumoral. And then after that, all tumors gone, then HITV maintenance treatment is started. The basically, uh, it is disease-free interval. It's very important. Uh, we should follow up over three years. So uh, I treated in HITV and 
PET CT diagnosed in uh, all cancer free. But at that time, and we should start in maintenance over three years. This, during these three years, no recurrent happens. That we called in complete remission in cure. This is protocol for this treatment. It's very complicated, but it's very simple. And we make a leukoaphoresis and, uh, and blood, taken blood samples. And dendritic cell, is, this is going in. Next day, memory T cell goes in. And then after one week, starting radiation. And then after radiation, one week later, and also retreating dendritic cell in the same place. And then next day, followed in memory T cells through intravenous. And treatment is that date. And then we follow up, and four to six weeks later, in recheck up by PET CT for checkup by efficacy. And treated site is, uh, it is going to uh, it's a CL or PL, SD, um, uh, something like in uh, it's an evaluation should be made. Also, we should check up, uh, it is new tumors. If find out in the new tumors, uh, we should do uh, take out on the CTL and then this, using this CTL can delete in the new tumors. This is the results of the, uh, these HITB efficacy. Um, number one is recurrent plus stage four. This, uh, this uh, data is in criteria patient. Now, in criteria means this is a uh, recurrent mass, is, uh, this is less than five tumors. And also, largest size of a tumor less than three centimeters. So, if we can find out in a very early stage of late cancer stage, some it's a recurrent happens, but the number of tumors is less than five. So, it is uh, we can have a much uh, this is uh, successful and results coming out. So, it is one year later one year later follow-up evaluation. So it is a CR 62.2% uh, and partial remission is around 13. So CR plus PR is around 75%. It is very high rate. But if it is uh, out of protocol patient, uh, such as uh, over 10 metastasis, and also large mass in uh, five centimeter, then 10 centimeter. It is, uh, this is out of protocol patient. It is uh, go down in some successful rate. And so CR and the PR around 13% only. And also stage four patient. That one is green is the recurrent patient. And the stage four patient is uh, around 7% seven, around is the CR and the PR. Also, CTL in, uh, is the efficacy. Is the, we prepared in CTL in, in direct injection into new tumors, and the radiation rate is around 60%. It's here. So just only one injection, only one time injection in CTL into new tumors, and the 60% tumor is deleted. And we repeated in the second time, this is our right side, this uh, twice, and our treatment is also regulated in 50%. So that it is very high rate and for uh, control of cancer. And what is, what is efficacy of immunotherapy? Already I explained about tumor vaccination 
a dendritic cell plus radiation, and then goes down, number of tumors is goes down, and then we follow up CTL induction. If we found that the new tumors developed and by controlled by CTL, and then goes down the number of cells, some like in recurrent waves come, and uh, it's a periodically, and then we are follow up by CTL, and please note, this is interval of the recurrent. This is ex extend and one by one. So we should follow up by Im any imaging that, uh, it's a procedure, and if we found you know, new tumors, it should be deleted uh, as, uh, as, as soon as possible to treat by CTL. This is one case in uh, 52 years female and breast cancer and recurrence of left breast cancer. We diagnosed it in uh, it's a number of recurrent number of tumor is nine. And then we started in radiation in the plus dendritic cell. And then Number nine goes down to eight. And then we are uh, followed up by uh, CTL and going to zero. And this is zero, zero, zero. And one year later, it happened two new metastases. So we can prepare for CTL and then this delete when those new tumors. Uh, this is PET CT data in here. You can see the several metastasis in the supraclavicular lymph node and paraaortic para lymph node and the liver metastasis. And then we do a radiation plus dendritic cell and goes down the number of new, new tumors. And then uh, we follow up dendritic cell plus CTL and then down regulate the tumor, number of tumors is going to zero and then keeping all CR, but after one year, it is happened, new, two new tumors. And then we do a dendritic cell plus uh, CTL, and then down-regulate and keeping CR. Next case is 73 years female, and also um, it's a both breast cancer and brain metastasis and multiple uh, neck and clavicular lymph node and axial lymph node metastasis. This is before treatment. Uh, it is both side of the breast is the primary and also metastasis in uh, both side of axial lymph node and then supraclavicular lymph node, so many. And then we are treated in radiation plus dendritic cell, and then it is down regulate of new tumors. So we are step wisely treated by CTL, and then it is uh, not happen to new tumors. Also, she had multiple brain metastasis. And this is before treatment. She received a whole brain radiation. And after that, and also we delivered through this carotid arteries. And also, uh, uh, as you know, there is four arteries in the neck to brain. And we are inject this four artery in a dendritic cell. And uh, four times, I think. And then uh, we make a vaccine in the metastasis in the brain. This is first evaluation. Uh, this is around three months later. It, uh, as you see, tumor is well controlled. This is uh, tumor markers, as you know, CEA. It's a very famous one. 
uh, before treatment, uh, CA levels is around 100. But after treatment, treatment and follow up by CTL, and then in final, you know, 5.4. So we are now in collecting the cases, and all cases from uh, September uh, 2011 and to last year, October, uh, we collected in 23 cases in the follow up and making a data. It is counting the number of tumors. You can see that if we found an over 20 uh, metastasis, and over 20, in some cases, in down regulate in very uh, good follow ups, but some cases in progression. But please note, if we found in less than 10 tumors, it is most of all well controlled. So we should find out in uh, earlier findings, is, I think it is very crucial. And also this examination is interval is every three months. So as you see, is the fourth examination, if it's around one year later. And the, the most cases under control. So we should focus on one, late, one year later, should be reaching to complete remission. Uh, this is very important things. So please note today, and please make a memory for these three points. And first one is stage four and recurrent means many tumors exist in many organs. Those tumors express a different antigen, so not the express same antigen. This metastatic size is express a different antigen, so dendritic cell should be learned one by one. So if taken out and one tumor out, and then making some antigen, some li uh, membrane lysate, some kind of antigen anyway we make. And then this antigen pass to dendritic cell and making a mem memory. And this educated dendritic cell, dendritic cell back to body. But this dendritic cell just only know one tumor. Another one, uh, another tumor don't know about that. But um, as you know, it's, this is cooperative antigen. Some like in the CEA and other several ant antigen is the old tumor you have. But uh, some antigen is not expressed in the different antigen expressing for one by one. So that CTL is the more uh, clever CTL should be prepared. One by one, dendritic cell are reaching to and delivered in one by one into tumors. After that, CTL is the covered whole tumors. And next one is dendritic cell, the combined with radiation or chemotherapy, may produce specific CTL, the called killer T cell, in the treated tumor sites. Then it, it will act to delete cancer cell in blood flow. This is the second very key note. It is, uh, I already explained about in advanced case, many tumors in the body already exist many cancer cell in blood flow. So how to delete the in cancer cell in blood flow? It is very, uh, if we uh, succeeded, uh, it is, we cannot happen, basically, if the new tumors not happens. If happens, it is very easy to delete by CTL. And third one is new mass uh, in the follow-up can delete by the CTL, and then we are going to cure. Cure means uh, over three years in disease-free. 
So there is no happens and new tumors. So that in final, uh, good vaccine means producing good CTL. This is that is very important issues. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kenichiro Hasumi, for that presentation. And you have a chance to ask him your questions uh, later in the Q&A session and outside also um, at the end of the conference. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hasumi. Excuse oh. me. And in addition, uh, Dr. Padera uh, asked me to announce a uh, clinical trial in lymphoma. Uh, she made a, uh, it's a new protocol for in uh, criteria. Yes. So I should uh, explain the right in very briefly. Uh, this is a uh, prospective phase two uh, in the clinical study involving 20 patients uh, with refractory and relapsed lymphoma. Study population will be comprised of two arms, control arm and test arm. Control arm will be uh, consisted of 10 patients uh, who will proceed to second conventional surveillance therapy after failure to first-line surveillance therapy. And this time, we be comprised to, of 10 patients who will receive intratumoral autologous immature dendritic cell injection and infusion of uh, memory T cell and combined with radiotherapy after failure of first salvage therapy. And then now, inclusion criteria. Patient with a histologically confirmed uh, lymphoma according to WHO criteria who have failed salvage therapy. Mean uh, several uh, tumors will, with a minimum diameter of two centimeters or metabolic activities as measured by PET-CT as a uh, standard uptake value, background ratio of over 1.5, and age between uh, over 18 to 70 years old, and refused chemotherapy or unsuitable uh, for chemotherapy, um, renal uh, Im impairment and cardiac uh, impairment and diabetic neuropathy. And maximum number of 10 regions as long as these regions are deemed accessible and safe to be irradiated by uh, oncologist and injected by interventional radiologist. A minimum uh, lapse of the three months from prior therapy to date of study enrollment. Adequate organ function is that uh, followed him. And the Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group, ECOG, performance status, uh, less than two. And the ex exclusion uh, criteria, and the life expectancy, less than three months, and evidence of a severe lung, heart, liver, or renal failure, or severe neuro neurologic disorder, a presence of uh, autoimmune disease or atopic allergy, HIV positive, and active hepatitis B, C infection, and zepsis, and other malignancy, and central, central nervous system metastasis, psychiatric disorders. Uh, this is a new tri uh, this is criteria uh, produced by uh, Dr. Fadera. Thank you very much. Thank you once again to Dr. Hasumi. Um, I'd like to invite Dr. Hasumi back to his seat and we'll uh, proceed with the next presentation. And uh, 
yeah, Dr. Hasimi did mention that the HITV protocol has managed to achieve 80% complete regression in stage four cancer patients if they had less than 10 metastatic tumors and each tumor is smaller than five centimeters. And of course, the success rate is uh, even higher for earlier stage one, two, and three uh, cancer patients. And now I would like to, um, thank you, Dr. Hasimi. I'd like to invite Your next speaker, please welcome uh, Professor Dr. Norli Abdullah, Professor in Surgery and uh, Consultant Surgeon, Department of Surgery, UKM Medical Center. Professor Dr. Norlia specializes in breast reconstructive surgery and is also the senior consultant surgeon of the Breast Unit Department of Surgery, Faculty of Medicine, UKM Medical Center, the Priscilla I think as was explained by um, Dr. Hasmi, Professor, uh, I'm just checking whether she's ready to, to go. Okay, we're still adjusting. Okay. Priscilla okay. Um, a very good afternoon and assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for kindly inviting me to share some information that we have uh, with the floor. Uh, pardon my voice, it's just I'm just recovering from a nasty sore throat, so I sound a bit raspy. Um, right. I understand that some of you may not actually be from the medical uh, field. So um, I think uh, Prof. Hasumi's explanation was uh, very good. Um, but I think I'll take a step back and probably start a little bit at ground level for those who might find the scientific information a little bit overwhelming. So it might be very basic for some, but please bear with me. Very basic. What is cancer? <laughs> right. So basically, um, cancers are groups of cells and they rapidly divide. And of course, there are many different types of cancers with different causes and risk factors associated with it. But mainly, um, what they do result in is in a lump in most cases. And just to let you know, a lump um, is normally called a tumor. For many people, a tumor equals to cancer, which is not really true. If you are unfortunate to slip and bump your head on the wall and end up with a lump, Benjol, like we call it in Malay, that is also a tumor. You see, any lump is a tumor. A pregnant lady with a growing abdomen is also having a tumor. So what I'm trying to say, a tumor is a lump, which may or may not be a cancer. That's the basic, okay? Now, what else does cancer do? It also destroys body structures and sometimes can result in the formation of an ulcer. Um, and um, the worst thing is that cancers tend to spread to the other parts of the body and this is what we call a metastasis. So a condition where the cancer has spread from the original organ to another part of the body is called a metastasis and in such a state the patient or the person having it is in stage four. Right. This is a lump. You can't deny that. Um, this is a normal breast on her left, and her right is the cancer. So that's a lump. It also destroys tissues. So it has destroyed the right breast and has formed an ulcer. 
And on closer look, you can see there were maggots in the ulcer. And we picked up 25 of these creatures. It also spreads to the other organs. So this unfortunate lady had cancer in the lungs. So she had metastasis leading her to need oxygen, as you can see from the diagram. So that fulfills the criteria of cancer. I just put this up just to share with you um, that this is a, a recent uh, data I obtained from Global Can in regards to the uh, spread of cancer worldwide. If you focus on the blue bars and at the top, you can see that um, in the uh, Western areas, Europe, Americans, uh, the continents, the number of cancers are very high. So the blue bars are very long. Um, and if you go down the chart, the cancer numbers become less. And we are under Southeast Asia. Is there, um, here. So we fall under here. Um, where do we go? Yeah, Southeast Asia, somewhere here, okay? Now, if you look at the red bar, that shows the mortality here. So as you can see, in the West, where the number of cases are a lot, but the mortality is not, not high. So it's almost similar all the way down here. What it shows is in the West, although the number of cancers are probably five times the number in less developed countries, the number of deaths related to cancer is not high. Right, and breast cancer, uh, it is actually the commonest cancer in women in many countries. For example, in, the, in America, about eight, uh, in every eight women, one will come down with breast cancer. It's almost similar in the United Kingdom. And closer to home in Malaysia, I know the data is a bit uh, behind, but we have uh, problems trying to keep up. But within our three largest community in the country, the highest rates in the Chinese, where every 16 Chinese ladies, one will come down with breast cancer, a bit less for the Indians and less for the Malays. Now, conventional treatment for breast cancer, the, the, the mainstay of treatment is surgery. So, um, here, and that's me and my team in theatre. Um, but the others, as you can see, I put a plus minus, meaning that they may not be necessary in all cases. But the, the baseline is usually surgery with or without chemotherapy, with or without radiotherapy, and with or without endocrine therapy. I prefer the terminology endocrine therapy to hormonal therapy because some people get confused with hormonal replacement therapy, yeah? And also immunotherapy, here I mean targeted therapy. So as you can see, generally, in a nutshell, these are the five modalities for the treatment of breast cancers. Now, um, of course, today's session is regarding our study, uh, whereby UKM Medical Center has collaborated with uh, the Hasumi International Research Foundation based in Japan, and Prof. Hasumi is, is uh, the founder, I would say, of this um, treatment. Um, so in our center in UKM, we have different departments involved. We have uh, the, uh, the Cell Therapy Center, Department of Surgery, Molecular Imaging, Nuclear Medicine, Radiology, Oncology, and Radiotherapy. Now, generally, uh, uh, this is the objective that we have, is actually to determine the response rate and safety profile of patients with breast carcinoma treated with this treatment, which is a combination of dendritic cell, activated T cell therapy, and linear acceleration radiotherapy. Um, and we will measure the efficacy of response, that means how it gets by, whether it's complete, partial, stable, or progressive. To simplify things, uh, we also look at uh, the secondary objective, which is to see the progression-free survival of those in the trial and their overall survival treated with this disease and their immunological response 
may also be tested using the ELISA test. So the hypothesis or the theory of this research that we are conducting, um, I have highlighted in red just to break it down and make it easier to digest. Um, so we are using intratumoral autologous immature dendritic cell injection, okay? Uh, with infusion of activated T cells that is combined with radiotherapy. So I'm trying to simplify things for you. And we, the theory is that this will result in prolonged overall survival and disease-free survival in such women treated with this treatment. Yeah? Right. And what it means is that the patient's blood has, will be taken her blood itself, and we will culture the blood in the special lab, HITV lab, and from there, we will harvest the immature dendritic cell. This is a type of white blood cell, right? And this, it, this is the thing that will be injected directly into the cancer cells, okay? This patient will also, the following day, have intravenous injection of activated T cells, which is also a type of white blood cell. And so the next day, we'll have radiotherapy to these injected lesions. Okay, I'm just breaking it down so it'll be easier to follow through. Okay. So we have certain inclusion criteria that we uh, put up here. The patient needs to be at least 18 years old and confirmed to have invasive carcinoma, invasive, because you have the pre-invasive, which is the DCIS, and the LCIS, which are pre-invasive, but we want the invasive ones in this study. And the patient needs to be HER2 negative. HER2 negativity is a, HER2 a character is a, a, the aggressiveness of the cancer. So from Prof. Hasumi's uh, observation, uh, the cancers which are HER2 negative are the ones which will respond to this treatment. Uh, the patient can either have local disease or metastatic disease. Uh, the metabolic activity measurement of five centimeter is based on the PET-CT measurement. Such patients having had progressive disease on or after second line chemotherapy can also be recruited. Or patients who need chemotherapy but refuse, they can also be enrolled. And also patients who need chemotherapy but they are not fit because they have comorbidities such as renal impairment failure or cardiac impairment or failure, hepatic impairment failure or diabetic neuropathy. All right? And we have initially uh, limited to 10 lesions, but we have, on further discussion with Prof. Hasumi, agreed to extend it to 20 lesions. And the lesions need to be assessed by our um, oncologist and interventional radiologist that these are safe. These areas are safe to be injected and irradiated, and they have a performance status of less or the same as two, meaning they're fairly well, and a life expectancy of a minimum of six months. Okay. Certain exclusion criteria, those which are HER2, 3 plus positive, unfortunately will not be eligible. Pregnant and or lactating women. Those who are immunosuppressed, for example, those with HIV or on immunosuppressive medications. Those with autoimmune diseases like systemic lupus erythematosus because what we're doing with this treatment is trying to enhance the immune reaction. So for those who have autoimmune disease like SLE, where the disease needs to be dampened, the immune therapy needs to be dampened, so if they were, were to be enrolled, then the disease itself, the SLE, will start to rear its head. So that's the problem here, okay? And if a patient has more than one malignancy, it's not eligible as well, because that would make follow-up a bit difficult. Um, those with central nervous system metastases, that means with the brain, spinal cord, and those with pericardial effusion, that means uh, fluid in the outside the heart and in the lungs or in the abdominal cavity. The reason why we are excluding them is that because the presence of these makes monitoring quite difficult. 
I'd like to present one of our cases. She is the first enrolled in our trial. Uh, she actually presented with a lump at the left breast at 35 years old in 2001. It's quite uh, 14 years ago. Uh, unfortunately, at that point, the diagnosis of this lump um, was only made by ultrasound. So no biopsies was done, and it, she was told that this was a benign lesion, a fibroadenoma. A couple of years later, there was a sternal lump at the chest bone. There was a lump over the chest bone that was noticed. Um, but it wasn't investigated at that point. And only 2005, that means four years from the discovery of the breast lump, did she have a biopsy of this lump. And at that point, it was confirmed to be cancer. Um, just to, I just made this short because it's quite a long history, but nevertheless, this lady went on to have chemotherapy, mastectomy, radiotherapy, endocrine treatment, and the cancer shrunk a bit and came back, but um, never really went away. She also had oophorectomy, removal of the ovaries to enable stronger uh, endocrine treatment. Um, unfortunately, this, the, lump that was, the obvious lump was over her sternum, which uh, grew larger. And she was enrolled into our HDITV trial in December last year. Um, a PET CT scan done at baseline uh, actually showed the sternal lump. There were actually three large areas. The largest measured probably about seven centimeters times five, but the rest were smaller. She also had mediastinal lymph nodes. She had spinal metastasis as well, C5 at the uh, cervical level and the thoracic level. And all were injected and radiated except the C5 and T1 because the doctors thought that that was technically difficult and maybe dangerous. So a follow-up PET-CT showed that all the injected and radiated sites shrunk uh, significantly. However, she had new small liver lesions. Uh, as you remember, initially there were no liver lesions found. And uh, the area that was not injected, C5 and T1, however, have grown a little bit. And the plan is for her to have CTL injection in a couple of weeks. This is how she looks. Um, this is that presentation. The sternal lump was very obvious. It looked like it was about to rupture. She also had a little ulcer there. And this was later, um, about three months later, where this had shrunk significantly, and this lesion has also shrunk significantly. So that's the end of my talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Dr. Nolia, for uh, making it a little simpler for us um, to understand. Uh, I'd like to invite um, Dr. Nolia uh, back to your seat. In a moment, we shall be uh, proceeding with a Q&A. But first, I'd just like to introduce you once again to um, Mrs. Chui Laikin, uh, who went through the uh, procedure herself, and her husband, Lai Achong. Please, could you come forward? And um, I spoke to Laikin, I spoke to Achong, but I think this is where the husband plays quite a role in, in helping to manage the whole process. So if you can tell us uh, what it was like, the experience for you. Um, she said she wants him to talk <laughs> for her. So what was it like for you going through the process uh, in going through the HITV treatment as, as you were supporting her all the way as well? I have been, uh, been supporting her all the way, even at the very early stage. Uh, we, we are just like any ordinary people like you all, None of us have any medical knowledge about breast cancer, you know. Uh, my wife has just, like uh, Dr. Nolia says, have a lump in 2010. Uh, went to the well-known uh, private hospitals. The first thing the, the surgeon said, you cut. So she had the metatomy, the whole left breast was removed together with 16 of the limb nodes of the lower armpit. So usually, usually, they, when they have surgery, they have always a circumference of safety of a certain CM to cut through. 
and then they'll send you to oncologist to go for radiotherapy or chemotherapy. But unfortunately, I think uh, I'm sad to say that most hospitals nowadays uh, really, really do not uh, consider the welfare of the patients. They, they just give you heavy doses of chemotherapy, a combined drug of something like two or three of them, as so evasive, abrasive to the patient. The patient sometimes, when they have chemotherapy, they throw it out, they vomit, and die of... Actually, they not die of cancer. They die of uh, other failure of other organs, especially when they have giving... I don't know why this, this so on day one, we all refuse to go for chemotherapy. Uh, radiotherapy was on a very minor stage. We had been of, uh, something like a, a headless fly trying to knock in every oncologist's doors to try and find out whether there is there any other way of having this treatment. And, and how has um, HITV been... Um HITV has been done her very well. For one and a half years, we were under treatment in uh, this Mahamaru Medical Center, who has in cooperation with the immunotherapy uh, treatment with Dr. Hazumi's practice. That she has gone through a process which is with minimum interruption of life, no side effect at all. It just processed accordingly and now she is totally when you can see in my video my wife is stage four right most of them thought that if you we are laymen you are stage four where you you look at if you have no treatment with two years down the road she will, may not survive at all now she's standing next, next to me healthy and happy she have you can find any other person different from all of you, we are disease-free. This is HITV. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we wish you all the best. And thank you for sharing with us. And um, you're a very, very fortunate woman to have um, him as your husband. <laughs> okay. um, I would now like to invite uh, one more panelist onto the stage, and that would be Dr. Bay. And we shall proceed with the Q&A session. I'll probably start it off with a couple of questions, and then we'll open it to the floor. And Dr. Bay is the director of the uh, Mahameru uh, International Medical Center. So perhaps I'll, I'll just start the ball rolling. I, I would ask any, any of our panelists. Uh, with HITV, is, is it a treatment that you can use for all sorts of cancers? Uh, we've seen a lot on, on breast cancer. So can HITV uh, be used to treat other types of cancers or all cancers? Dr. Hassani. No, basically, uh, this HITV, that's, uh, this procedure is based on intratumoral injection so that uh, this is should be excluded uh, if a blood cancer some leukemia uh, it is not available but basically it is uh, recurrent cancer is already cancer cell in exist in the blood so just same like you know uh, leukemia but uh, uh, making a several tumor make vaccine so that in final CTL come out. This CTL delete in cancer cell in blood. So uh, just now we are indicating for solid tumors. So it is uh, a breast cancer and other uh, stomach and colon and renal and um, other solid tumor is available treatment. Dr. Bay. As Dr. Hatsumi says, as long as there is a tumor, there's a mass of cancer, then we can treat it. So, uh, to help you understand better in layman's term, 
Although Dr. Nolia tried to make it very layman, I want to make it even more layman. So, uh, can I have my slides, please? You know, in our body, we, have, we are all made of cells. Okay? And um, cancer is uh, one of our own cells gone bad. It all starts with one cell. The mutation in the cell, uh, in the DNA, and perhaps uh, it is already written in our DNA code, the different kinds of cancers we may get. So, if you are unlucky, then that particular cancer DNA gets triggered. And then that cancer uh, starts to spread. Um, so, immunotherapy is just a, an additional uh, dimension to cancer treatment. Additional tool for you to fight cancer. You have conventional surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, endocrine therapy, etc., which are all very effective. And, but unfortunately, we still can't bring the patient to cure. So now we have another uh, tool to use, and this is immune therapy. And if you think about it, it is your immune system which is created for you by the divine that keeps you healthy from the day you are born till today. We are invaded by millions, trillions of bacteria, viruses, fungus, and even cancerous cells. The immune system gets rid of them and keeps you healthy. But in cancer, the cancer cells being originally your cell is a very clever cell. And it also wants to live like you want to live. They also want to live. So they find a way to survive. So, can I have the slide first? Now, vaccination is not, nothing new. We, you all know we, have, we are able to prevent a lot of illnesses today. Smallpox, polio, hepatitis, chickenpox, mumps, measles, rubella, influenza, everything. If we can identify, mankind can make a vaccine. But actually, it is, they are quite easy to treat because these are very simple organisms. Very, very little, small DNA. They are not so clever like the, your human cell. You, we can even prevent cervical cancer today by using human pep, uh, vaccine against HPV. Women, yeah, all of you should have uh, this <coughs> vaccine done, then you don't have to worry about getting cervical cancer. Dr. Hasumi now has found a way to vaccinate you, if you ever have cancer, against the cancer. And once the immune system can recognize your cancer, the cancer will not have a chance to survive. Uh, next slide. Okay. The, our cells have been given... For a, can, a cell to become cancerous, it has to break through all these six barriers. For example, uh, apoptosis, which is cell suicide. Every cell in your body has a certain lifespan. When it gets old, maybe 120 days, then it is time for it to die and a new cell will come. Okay. Um, but the cancer has found a way to avoid having to die. That is called apoptosis, cell suicide. Um, and then it's able to bring in its own blood supply. It's able to <coughs> replicate, limit, uh, unlimited uh, replication potential. It's able to bring in its own growth signals, etc. But there is a seventh hallmark, which is lack of immune rejection. That is, it has found a way to escape from the immune system, which is actually in your body, your police, and your army. Okay. So, the immunologists have already found out how they do it. For example, uh, the, every cell has a protein called the B7 protein. And uh, 
in order for the T cell, that is your white blood cell, to recognize that cell, it has to latch on to the B7 protein. The cancer cell has mutated and then changed that B7 into B7H1, but the new name is called PDL1, Program Death Ligand 1. It is like a poison thorn. When your immune cells come and latch onto that thorn, it dies. Okay, that's PDL1. So, drug companies now have gone on to develop a drug to block this PDL1. And the first one, called Premblolizumab, uh, has been uh, given FDA approval to 014. Okay, so it is this is drugs which are working on the immune system. The function of your dendritic cell is two. One, it is the CIA, special branch. Okay, you can understand, right? These are the ones that go and identify friend or foe. Okay, and then if it is foe, enemy, what is your IC number, passport number, address? Okay, then the second function is the general. Attack or not attack? That is the function of the dendritic cell. It is the main cell in your immune system. All of us have it. This is what every time even a mosquito bites you, you get a lump. That is dendritic cell in action. Okay? Ah, this is a poison from, uh, I mean, the mosquito is bitten. All right, we have to prevent it. So it calls on your blood blood cells and then inflammation happens and you get a wheel. Then your body has your troopers. These are CTL, cytotoxic T lymphocytes. They can kill, but they must be told who to kill. Okay? So this information must be given to them. And this is what Dr. Hasumi's therapy is all about. Send in the spies in huge numbers, not just one or two, they will be captured and they'll be killed. Right? If you have 100,000 enemy, we send in 100,000 spies. Right? Next day, we send in the activated T lymphocytes. These are the memory T cells to receive and collect information and remember it for life. Remember it for life. Okay? Now with this information, the T's, this activated the helper cells will start recruiting these new soldiers and tell them, okay, this is IC number, passport number, address, go and attack. Very simple. But this is how your immune system works. Okay? But we can help you by, because there are not so many dendritic cells in the bloodstream, we collect your monocytes and we make them and culture them to become special branch officers. And then we make another huge army of the helper cells. Right? Then when we do this process, the new CTLs will be produced by the immune system. Then we collect this CTL and from one platoon, we make 100 battalions in the lab. Okay. Now the enemy is so many. I, will, I also have as many, maybe more. And we use this to attack. And this CTL will have, they are cancer specific. They will zoom in on the cancer cell and nothing else. Dr. Hasmi showed you a slide, but I don't think you understood that in his, that slide where you saw the blue line and the two green lines, what it showed was the cancer, at operation, the, the patient's cancer were cultured and kept alive. Okay? And then uh, he did the HITV process, CTL is produced. Then we collect the CTL and in the lab, mix them together and see what happens. The CTL kill all these cancer cells. Then this same CTL, when mixed with cancer, the same cancer, for example, stomach cancer, from other patients, nothing happens. It cannot recognize. So it is specific for that cancer, for you. So this treatment cannot if I do for you, I cannot use your cell and give to everybody else. It's tailor-made and work over for you and only for you and only for that cancer. Okay? So, 
It is a war going on in your body. Your cell, your police, your army against the enemy. So, how do we fight a war? In the same as human society. First, you remove the enemy general and the headquarters. That is the cancer stem cell. That first cell. This cancer stem cell can just multiply forever. Must remove this one. Okay? Then, you enhance military intelligence and surveillance. That is your dendritic cell. Okay? Get information. Then you train your special ops officers in great numbers. That is your CTL. Okay? But do you know, in cancer, there's also corrupt police officers. Hmm? Like in our society, you know? You see some nightclubs, they're not doing rubbish, but police never go and catch them. Right? Because when the cancer, the, your immune cells go and attack the cancer, these corrupt police officers, they are called T-Rex, regulatory T-cells. They say, no, 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 ini kawan, jangan, apa. Okay? So we have to remove these people as well, and we know how to do it. Dr. Hasmi has found a way to remove the corrupt officers and to remove that poison thorn. Okay? And then we conduct surgical strike like what USA is doing in attacking ISIS. Okay? Using drones, using what? You don't just bomb the whole city. If you bomb the whole city, yeah, you're like Israel tried to bomb uh, Palestine to kill Hamas. Did they kill Hamas? Maybe they killed 100, 200. But how many normal citizens died? Thousands and thousands. So, if we were to do indiscriminate bombing with like using strong chemo, this is what happens to you. Your immune system also get affected and your good cells get affected. So surgical strike is possible today with minimally invasive procedures. We have radio frequency ablation where we just put in a needle and cook, cook the tumour. Okay? And we have tomotherapy which can focus the radiation on the tumour and spare the surrounding tissue. Surgical strike. No longer do we need to chop off half your lung or half your liver because there's a small tumour there. Just burn the tumour, good enough. Then, we have to reduce your vital, vital supplies, their blood supply. We can either go and block the artery supplying the tumour or we can use a drug such as Avastin which causes the tumour blood vessels to shrink. Gender-specific tumour like breast cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer, they require male and female hormones to grow. So you use endocrine treatment or hormone treatment where we block the hormones. Okay? This is how it works. Then you must maintain police and military surveillance. That means regular checkup. Keep sending in the spies. Every month, keep sending in spies. Okay? And then you have troop retraining. This is how we help you Use your immune system to fight the cancer. Um, this is how we, you know, Dr. Hasmi said, pet CT, pet CT. You probably don't know what he's talking about. This is a machine which is the most sensitive uh, imaging device now to find out whether you have cancer or not. It, it doesn't, uh, it's unable to detect a few cancers, but most cancers it will pick up. And the theory is very simple. You give radioactive sugar water, fluorodeoxyglucose, it's glucose, sugar. So we ask the patient to come, fasted four hours, five hours, six hours. Now all the cells are hungry. Then we give the sugar, but you see the cancer cells are very greedy. They are growing very fast, so they need a lot of sugar. So they will take up more of this sugar than the other cells. And then when we scan, it will light up like a bulb. You see the red light. Yeah? Even standard three can point out, oh, the cancer is there. Hmm? You don't need to be, go to medical school. Just look at the picture. And how we collect the cells is using this machine. Uh, it's a pharisis machine. You spin the blood and then you, know, you spin it around. And we only collect one type of cell called monocytes. The rest give back to the patient. So only 100 mils of blood is taken. 
But inside these 100 mils of blood, there are 8 billion cells. And then you're going to get 8 billion soldiers. And this is the GMP certified cell lab, which Dr. Hasmi has transferred his technology to Malaysia, to HITV lab. And it's available now. We can grow this cell. Previously, all the patients have to travel to Japan. Okay. Now you don't have to travel to Japan for this. It can be done here in Sungai Long uh, Hospital. And this is that tomotherapy where you do surgical strike. This machine can irradiate, focus the radiation on the tumors and multiple tumors in one go. In one session, 15 minutes, you can hit 5, 10, 15, up to you. you can go. Okay. So this is very effective machine and it's available in this country, in uh, Saim Dhabi, in Prince Court. I think in the Institute Cancer Nagara also has one now. Um, coming to the question, does it work in other patients? So here's my clinical experience working with Dr. Hasumi. My first case was a 58-year-old female lung cancer, non-smoker. She doesn't smoke, you know, she, she behaves herself, but she's got bad luck. And then one day she went for medical checkup, found out that the cancer marker was very high, and she already had uh, cancer all over. So she underwent chemotherapy, carboplatin, gemita, zomita. Very, very powerful uh, chemotherapy, six causes. But unfortunately, it didn't work for her. So on follow-up, when she came to see me, her body was riddled with cancer. All the black marks that you see, that's cancer. Normally, for such patients, you'll say, go back and you know, spend quality time with your family. Mm? And we give you things you know, so that you don't have pain, no suffering, you know? hospice care. Mm? There's really nothing else we can do. Chemotherapy doesn't work, etc. And that was the time I first got to know Dr. Hasmi. I said, okay, why don't you try this? You know, you have maybe 1%, 0.5% chance that you can get better. You know, if you can afford it, try it. So she went to see Dr. Hasumi, and Dr. Hasumi did his treatment. He spent one whole day injecting into every tumor, 40 tumors, from morning till midnight, non-stop. Very tiring for him. And, but look at the results. Six weeks after, fantastic. I fell off my chair. I cried for her. Very interesting thing about immune therapy is once the uh, area has been treated, there is an immune memory there. A tumor does not occur in the same place. You can see left and right, 13 months after treatment, doesn't recur in the same place. New lesions can appear. Why? Because for a patient with so much cancer load, there is cancer everywhere, just that we can't see them. Given time, they will show up. So what do we do? we send in the spies again. Okay? Repeat, as many times as necessary. Okay? Until the tumour is gone. And even in the brain where we cannot inject, the immune system went to attack and the brain lesions are gone. Okay? This is my second patient. He just had a bit of cough and they found out he already had stage 4 cancer. So huge, st stuck to the heart and behind the heart and also in the abdomen, inoperable. So it's chemotherapy, radiation, or, or, or nothing. So he said, okay, I try Hasumi's therapy. So went to see Dr. Hasumi in Japan, and six weeks after, only 5% left, six months later, it's gone. And not surprisingly, at seven and a half months, it comes in the abdomen, in the adrenal organ. Okay, so Dr. Hasumi inject the his CTL, and after one month, it's gone. He survived very long, more than two years. Osteosarcoma, a bone cancer. Normally, people don't live beyond two years if you have the osteosarcoma because it's very aggressive, it spreads very fast. So, the orthopedic surgeon will say, I, no point chopping off your leg because it's going to appear in the other leg, I'm going to chop off this leg, and then I'm going to appear here, I'm going to chop here, and then nothing else. So, 
uh, very difficult. And he had gone everywhere for treatment, Singapore, Guangzhou, you know. And then when uh, he was actually uh, already given up hope, but his good friend uh, who was in the audience said, but he has left because he's got a flight at six o'clock. Uh, he said, I sponsor you. You go and have treatment okay, because you are my friend. So he paid for him to go and see Dr. Asumi. And then you can see left side the two lung lesions. And this was just, uh, that is December, but recently, just uh, last week he came, still no recurrence and uh, tumors in the leg, all no recurrence. And it's three years, no recurrence. However, because of multiple surgeries and radiotherapy, the leg has become like wood. And it's painful. So my advice to him, chop off the leg now. Okay? And then put in a prosthetic leg, you're free from cancer. Because for three years, cancer has not appeared in any other part of the body. It won't appear anymore. The leg is useless now. It's giving him pain. Chop it off. Gone. Pain is gone. Put on a leg. People with prosthetic leg can even climb Mount Everest. Uh, another patient of mine, uh, 83 year old with recurrent kidney cancer. She had the kidney taken out and metastasized to the aortic nodes and given chemotherapy. But even as chemotherapy was given, the, the cancer was still growing. So the family decided why don't we try? And one treatment. Till today, she is disease free. Stage 4 prostate cancer, 85 years old. Cancer everywhere. And you can see all the red marks there's a cancer. And this is on the right, right hand side, that's six weeks after treatment. Uh, and this gentleman didn't die of cancer, he died of stroke. And this be the tree like in. Uh, and uh, you can see she's riddled with cancer, and now she's cancer free. Uh, pancreatic cancer. This is uh, the, the mother of all cancers, the most aggressive. Most people die from it. And the treatment is also uh, very, very jalat, <laughs> terrible. It's called a whipple. And in the whipple, you have to cut off two thirds of the, the pancreas, or maybe all, most of the pancreas, take off the gallbladder and take off uh, part of the stomach and duodenum and then join everything back. And then for this surgery, when you try to join uh, intestine onto pancreas, pancreas excretes digestive enzymes. These enzymes will eat through your suture. So most patients will have leakage, etc. So they end up sometimes one month in the ICU and all that and yeah okay she said stop talking <laughs> okay that's it for now thank thank you dr B. i didn't actually say that but yes we, we want to give a chance for you to also ask um, our panelists but i hope you understand what yeah. is immune I, I, therapy now okay special yeah. branch and uh, all this I think we've had very good explanations from three different uh, experts, and I, I hope they're very clear and you know what to ask now. I'd like to invite back on stage Professor Dr. Um, Norlia. So for those of you who have questions, can you please walk up to the microphones and ask your question? Hi, I would like to ask Dr. Hasumi, how do you make your T-cells activated? Is it antigen-specific activations of your T-cells? And I also would like to know how long from your draw blood from your patients until you re-infuse back your dendritic cells and T-cells back to the patients. Until now, you have treated so many patients. What are the known side effects of this HITV treatment? And one more question. Wow, that's What's... four. Okay. <laughs> I think we... Thank you. One by one. Okay. How do you get the T cells activated? Because you do reinfuse by activated T cells into the patients. Okay. I'm Lim Guiping from Cancer Research Initiative Foundation. Um, firstly, and uh, if 
uh, after leukoaparesis. And uh, this is, uh, uh, we are uh, separate in uh, adherent cell uh, to monocyte. Uh, this is going to dendritic cell. In the floating cell, uh, this is, we are uh, isolate and then uh, also stimulated in CD3. And then uh, uh, in final, we are uh, in lead to expression of CD54. And this is uh, called um, much expression uh, T cell, is a memory T cell. So uh, this is leading by uh, ion machine. Okay. Yeah. And so this pretreatment is very necessary. The second question. What are the known side effects till now from the HITV treatment? Uh, basically, dendritic cell is a no, no side effect. Nothing happens. But uh, when next day uh, we are intravenous in memory T cell, and sometimes happens very high fever and over 38 over a degree, yeah, very high fever, but uh, this is a transient, around three, four hours, and, and it will go down to normal level. So can I just summarize your previous answer that HITV treatment is not antigen specific, you actually just isolate T cells based on CD54 marker? No, no, I, you got it wrong. Okay. It's antigen specific, it's not the T cell that goes and identified antigen is the dendritic cell. The immature dendritic cell is the CIA. Collects information of antigen, pass it to the activated T cell, which is the memory T cells. Memory T cells will now invoke immune response, call the B cells and tell them, make these antibodies. Call the T cells, the CTL, cytotoxic T cells. This is the antigen you look for. Okay? The CTL is antigen specific. Does that answer your question? So, and memory T cell activate the pre CTL to activate to a mature CTL. Okay, thank you. And the last question: Every patient needs to be follow up for three years. Can I know what's the ballpark cost for HITV treatment in Malaysia? Depends on your stage. One, two, or three or four, and for stage four, whether it's early or terminal. If it's just stage one, 50,000, stage two, 80,000, stage three, 150,000. Early stage four, 250,000 is the amount of money you got ready. Terminal stage four, you're gonna have multiple battles drawn out over, it will cost you maybe 400,000. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Next question, please. Hello. Hi. Uh, it is, it is, uh, sorry, uh, that band first. Uh, we go by who gets to the mic first. Please, continue. Uh, my question is related to the talk by Dr. B just now about uh, T-REC. How do you disarm T-REC from uh, immune response? Yeah. One of the role of uh, tomotherapy, the radiation, one is to kill and injure and weaken the cancer cells. It also kills the T-Rex. Uh, this is how we do it. The another way you can do it is using chemotherapy. Dr. Hasmi, you have anything to right? add? Yes, basically in a very advanced case, and this is upgraded in T-Rex uh, amount in, in uh, its uh, lymphocyte testing. Uh, so, Normally, uh, it is a healthy people. It's the T leg levels in blood in less uh, less than 10, 10 percent. And but in uh, some metastasis happens, it goes up in around over 20 percent. But if we will start in HITB after evaluation of this efficacy, and then this is go down and down regulated uh, T leg levels. So we should follow up, and this uh, is CTL levels, and also NK cell levels, and the T-leg levels, and 
uh, this is using a fax um, uh, for in the analyzing about and some of uh, these uh, uh, data and also follow up and periodical follow ups necessary. Just following on that, that question, do you think that the use of uh, NTCTLA4 or NTPD1 uh, affect the TREC uh, number? Uh, it is uh, Stanford people, and uh, uh, it's a uh, hematology group, and they are doing it and combined with direct dendritic uh, cell into direct into tumors in lymphoma, and then uh, combined with uh, anti CTLA4. Um, it is some good results come up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question, please. Yeah. Um, Dr. Hazumi, Prof. Nolia, doc, Dr. Bay, good day. Uh, my name is Chris. Um, <clears throat> I have one testimony and one question, right? The testimony, I hope, I just want to assure the audience that the organizer did not plant me in the crowd here. Uh, my sister, uh, she's 48 years old. Um, in 2012, she was diagnosed as having gallbladder cancer. She had a, a cholecystomy, cholecystomy, the removal of gallbladder. Um, two years on, um, the cancer recurred and metastasized to liver. And um, she's a direct recipient of the HITV. Uh, via Dr. Bay's clinic. Um, before and after the uh, treatment, the therapy, uh, um, we found that from the PET CT that at least 80-90% of her tumor is gone in the liver. But unfortunately, she did not made it. And that's partly because we started her way too late and the cancer has already created a big hole in her liver. All right? And... and, and she didn't make it because of that, all right? And I just want to share this testimony to, to basically support the, uh, the HITV therapy. The question I have is, uh, do you have any experience using this therapy for Langenhan cell histocytosis case, LCH in short? Langenhan cell histocytosis. Langenhan cell histocytosis. He, he still? Histosis. Histosis. Langer has a bone. LCH in short, you know. Uh, what, what is that? Uh, okay. <laughs> I need to, I need to explain that a little bit. I'm not a medical person, but my nephew, nine years old, uh, I think in, um, uh, in a community, the doctors in HUKM, they should be aware of it. She, he suffered this condition called LCH, Langerhans cell histocytosis. It is, it happened once in uh, like a million child, normally happened in a child, and it's a cell level type of disease, and the doctors would treat him like cancer because it's at cell level. So he has wreck havoc to, her lung, to his lung, you know, her lung collapse and spread to her uh, brain, her, her pituitary gland, and all that. So I just want to know if. You have experience with this HITV on uh, cases like this? Langerhans cyber histocytosis. Uh, it is Langerhans cell uh, producing uh, insulin, right? Uh, no, it's just uh, uh, it's a cell that creates havoc to major organs. Um, I don't know about this a lot, but I think along the way, along my medical career, that I did come across such a case. Um, but I think to be honest with you, this is a very rare condition. Yes. And in, as in rare cases, obviously the information about treatment may be a bit scanty. But after reading uh, Prof. Hasumi's um, summary of cases, I don't remember... Uh, coming across any such case and I think it would be very difficult to know for sure because of the rarity maybe, maybe I don't know if it's worth a try maybe you can discuss with Dr. Bay and Prof. Asumi if you know if nothing else works maybe just give it a shot and see but I don't know okay thank you thank you Chris
Uh, next question. Uh, hi. Yeah. Oh. Oh, there's a lady yeah, over there. Oh, she's got a so, yes. um, I think I met, met Dr. Bay last week. So, so, she's uh, the Dr. Uma from Ipo. Yeah. So actually, I came from Ipo because I wanted to attend this uh, talk. Thank you very much. I think it's really worth the drive down. Uh, I thank all the panelists for such an excellent uh, meeting today. I have a few questions. Uh, I'll just cut it down to two because I don't want to take up so much time. One is, again, going, going back to the PD-1 and PD-L-1. So if you have an uh, increased PD-1 and PD-L-1, does it mean your HITV treatment is less effective? You must pair it with uh, the drugs. You know, you've mentioned the pembrolizumab, nivolumab, I think nivolumab and ipilumab. I think must you pair it with those drugs uh, to make it effective? And uh, the second question is, do you have patients, I mean, I noticed many of your patients had multiple spinal metastases. Assume you're dealing with adenocarcinoma most of the time. But, you know, if you have patients uh, who have primary liver metastases, extensive liver metastases with liver insufficiency, um, does this treatment still work because it's part of the reticular endothelial system? Thank you very much. Uh, PDL1, and just we are starting in, in combination with dendritic cell uh, vaccine plus PDL1. Uh, this clinical trial started in University of Maryland Head and Neck Department in, in this year, maybe. So the result is not, I'm not sure. Uh, it's a many metastasis in the lung and the liver, and I think it is very, very difficult. So it now, in, I asked to Dr. Bay to uh, insert in a uh, uh, catheter uh, in the hepatic port, and the catheter into hepatic artery, and then made, uh, it's a delivered dendritic cells through artery and whole liver. And at the same time, we do a uh, combined with chemotherapy. When just we are now studied, so it will result will come up you know, six months later. Yes, we'll have a question for the lady. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, I'm Juan Marlini, Juan Abdurrahman. Um, I, I have a question for Professor Norlia. Um, I believe about a few months back, my mother went to see you and inserted a chemo port in her, and. Um, she was actually um, uh, diagnosed with uh, breast cancer, but it has metastasized to the, to the liver. Um, unfortunately, the chemo treatment is not uh, working. Uh, her, her current uh, chemo treatment is not working. And um, I believe um, you did inform her about this treatment. And um, we wanted to uh, follow through with you about it. Um, She's not here today because she wanted to be here today. She couldn't even get up. Uh, I was wondering if, um, how do we you know, best go about doing it um, to, to, to expedite this? Um, and secondly, uh, there's a concern about the six weeks that uh, when you are culturing the, um, the dendritic cells. Two weeks. Two weeks, okay. Because the, you're not supposed to do any chemo during that period. Um, or any other treatment, I believe. Um, how does it, um, you know, affect her in this situation when she's quite, you know, fragile? I think um, from the inclusion criteria, the patient has to be of a fairly, um, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't say in a very, very bad state. Mm -hmm. um, we said about ECOP2. So meaning that if she's usually very, very ill, mm -hmm. It may be a problem, you okay. see. Um, but nevertheless, um, I think we'll need to assess her again. Okay. Um, number one, if to be enrolled into the trial, she needs to be her two, three plus negative. I'm not, I can't remember. I'm not, I'm not sure your, your mom, her yeah. pathology. And also, uh, the number of lesions, if she's going to be eligible for the trial, we will need to have a look. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Usually the washout period that we say is six weeks from the last chemo. But if she's on any endocrine treatment, then that can carry on. Mm. Uh, we have patients who, who are carrying on with the endocrine treatment, but not chemo. Uh, for fear of it, you know, impeding the immune response, which would be very necessary for this to work. Okay. 
yeah, but we could meet up and then we'll, we can do yes, the thank discuss. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. There's one thing I learned and which was very encouraging to me was treating Chris's sister. When she came, she was already jaundiced, very anemic, very thin, very weak. I was really not optimistic that the immune system would still be strong enough to fight the cancer. But surprisingly, even in such a patient who is so sick, it still showed 90% regression of the tumour. So, the immune system is very powerful. When it's too powerful, it can even kill you. Do you know that? <laughs> More about that later. Now, let's, um, it's amazing, actually, the, the human body, the, the, what the divine has bestowed upon us. And I will now have um, the a question from the lady over there. Uh, afternoon, Professor and Doctor. I'm Chris here. Uh, can, I, can I ask, okay, uh, for a breast cancer patient with triple negative, they already undergo surgery, already undergo chemo, and on the radi radiotherapy stage, Will DHHI-TV be helpful as an add-on to prevent recurrence in future? I think from the treatment that we have, I mean, I normally rely on Prof. Hasumi's uh, data because he is the man involved. But I don't think that we, at the moment, use it as a preventive measure. Do we? Do you? The tumour must be present in order for us to be able to send in the spies. If there's no tumour left, how to where are we going to send the spice? Okay. <laughs> I, I think um, this is, uh, I recommend to use a preventive vaccine. It's a not therapeutic vaccine. So in, if you can use some preventive vaccine, and it is so many preventive vaccines now, peptide vaccine and uh, with adjuvant, and also uh, peptide parts to dendritic cell, and then this will return to body. Some kind of these preventive vaccines is so many, and then it is follow up, and then if new tumor find it, and then this is uh, HITV indicated. It's not part under maintenance now, the HITV, if let's say it's, it's not under the maintenance. Not yet, part. we haven't even started, so there's not maintenance. Oh. It, you, you are in the preventive stage. Okay. okay, okay, thanks. Dr. Hasumi's father invented Hasumi vaccine for prevention of cancer in 1948. And it's available. Okay, thank you. Okay, next, the lady in blue. Yeah. Oh. Uh, thank you, Professor Hasumi. I have uh, two questions. I'm Hashima from University of Malaya. Uh, the first one, if I understand correctly, uh, you use composite antigen to pulse your dendritic cells from the various tumor sites. Did you do that? No, we don't, we don't take the antigen from the tumor to pulse it in the lab. The dendritic cell is delivered directly into every tumor. Mm. Okay. This but is the, the live... the activation of the T cell is done outside. Yes, the culture of the T cell is done in the lab. Uh, T helper cells as well as CTL. No CTL. Just C T helper cells. The T helper, the memory cell, is to receive the information mm -hmm. from the dendritic cell. And then it's then the dendritic cell will now invoke an immune response and recruit new. CTLs and give them the information. Okay. That CTL becomes antigen specific. So it's still antigen specific, it's not composite from the various tumor sites? No, no. Okay. Okay. Uh, th th this is normal way. In the, uh, it's around uh, 20 years ago, this kind of a vaccine studied. It's a tumor take out and make vac uh, antigen, cellulite antigen. And then dendritic cell and prepared, and this lysate antigen pulse to dendritic cell, mm -hmm. and this educated dendritic, dendritic cell in the back to the body into lymphocyte, 
lymph node and also on the skin. Mm. And this is very, uh, this is uh, established way. Mm. But uh, this is, I think it is better for a um, preventive vaccine. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And second question, did you look into your patients which have uh, complete uh, remission and partial remission? Uh, what was the criteria that makes them such? Did you look at that? Uh, I, uh, yes, I just explained by using a slide, but uh, uh, basically if we can find an uh, early stage of a recurrent or a stage four patient, uh, uh, the, uh, the number of tumors and also tumor size is very important. But anyway, we can find an early stage of this uh, case and then uh, our data is very, very good. And after, uh, after one year, uh, we may be reaching a uh, complete remission around 80%. But uh, this is depending on the number of tumors. If uh, already patients have over 20 tumors, uh, I think it is very, uh, it's a complete remission after one year, it goes down maybe a 15 round. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll have the lady to my right, and after that, uh, it's lady to my right. Hello, I'm uh, uh, Nursi Amundin from UKM, and uh, I'd like to address this to the panel, especially Dr. Hasimi. See, um, <clears throat> I'm talking on behalf of my sister, who's having a, a colon cancer, and her colon is being removed. So there's no tumor. And we went to see Dr. Bay recently. Um, now, she is in uh, Delamoa because she's under HUKM uh, specialist who uh, advised her to go for chemotherapy. But uh, for some reason, chemotherapy seems to be a very scary, uh, you know, to everybody, I think. Now she wants to go for immunology therapy. But uh, I understand that from the talk that only reoccurring tumor can be treated, right? So can you advise in the case of my sister? Thank you. Um. で、手術の後で、今トゥメルがないんですけども、まだ再発もわからない。術後したばかりです。で、ケモテラピーを進められてる。で、患者さんはどうした方がいいか。あ、ワンクッションです。あ、ハウステージオブディスコンキャンセル
I hope that's um, answered it satisfactorily. You may uh, see them later as well. Uh, the lady in the camera, please. Good evening, and thank you very much. In fact, I, uh, I have mentioned for 16 years ago, I was a nursing sister. You know, I'm not shivering because I got cancer. I'm shivering because of the financial. We have to go for the treatment. <laughs> Myself is the first state. And my friend, last time working together with me, she did a mastectomy for me, for me and clearance. It happened that I'm very fortunate. I palpate and I, you know, make me very suspicious and I discussed with my surgeon. Surgeon said, well, Lo, you're coming to 60. Why not you take it out and throw it away? Uh, no, I regret it because I love to wear lovely dresses. Without that, I, I, I feel like I'm not complete, no, not nice, not beautiful at all. <laughs> Dane Port, Dane Port, isn't it? So I must thank all of you. You, you have Science and technology have advanced so much, and it take my fear away. I'm now 75, uh, about 15 years I'm having this cancer, and first day. And uh, I don't think I will die of cancer, I will die of old age. Now I'm aging with dementia. I, I, I mean, I'm from Sagamat. For two, one and a half years, I got some heart problem, that's why I'm not active. Now my physician showed me, Lo, you go out. You, you must go and upgrade yourself. You must, you must learn until the day you die. So today I'm here. I'm very happy. And I hope the scientists and gene bank and immunization for everything so that the future generation have a longer and healthy life to go on. And thank you very much. With you, I give you three bow. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Sorry, can I, I just, uh, can Sorry. I just uh, put in a word here? Uh, I'm actually one of the surgeons who don't like to do mastectomy. And there are not too many of us around. So uh, I have recently done a white local excision under local anesthesia for an 82-year-old lady. So even if you're 82, I think you probably want your body whole. It doesn't mean just because you don't need to breastfeed, you can lop it off. To me, mastectomy, whatever name, is an amputation. And I don't really feel, feel that it should be done willy-nilly. So I'm actually one of those who strongly prescribe neoadjuvant treatment. And that can be either neoadjuvant chemotherapy or neoadjuvant endocrine therapy to shrink the cancer. So rather than do a mastectomy, maybe you remove one quarter or one third. And for those who really need to have it removed, I, I give the option of reconstruction. If you are fairly fit, go for it. Thank you. The gentleman over there, please. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ian. Um, actually, I would just like um, to request for Dr. Bay to just elaborate on the HITV treatment for pancreatic cancer before it was uh, interrupted earlier. And uh, also, what, what, is the, what is the success rate uh, for such a treatment? Pancreatic cancer is still one of the most difficult cancers to treat. It's a very aggressive tumour. We have to treat it very aggressively. Dr. Hasmi also has experience with many pancreatic cancer patients. Uh, this patient that I treated, she has passed away. But the treatment of dentitixia was very effective. At six weeks follow-up, 95% gone. Then that 5% went to see Dr. Hasumi, put in fine needle radio frequency ablation to cook the tumor, and it's gone. But very quickly, it already showed up in the other places. Then we recommended that she should have some chemotherapy together with dendritic cell. One hour chemotherapy, she's out. She cannot eat, she's vomiting, etc. And, uh, and then she was downhill all the way. So it was unfortunate. We are still struggling with pancreatic cancer. 
I think Dr. Hasmi has uh, one or two successful cases so far. You know, basically, in pancreatic cancer and the viral duct carcinoma, um, bladder carcinoma, it is three diagnoses. It is very difficult to go into cure. And it is possible to prolong survival, uh, but a complete, complete remission is very difficult to reach in there. And uh, we are now treating um, uh, two patients in pancreatic cancer uh, recurrent. And they are now doing a little bit well. Uh, it's an induction treatment, either uh, dendritic cell and IMRT. And then we follow up. Uh, the patient already done in a gem stabin, gem thou already done in before. So in a set, uh, it's a possibility of a chemotherapy is uh, nothing more. So we combine with uh, dendritic cell and plus uh, IMRT and then shrink the tumors. In the very uh, first ev uh, evaluation is very good. But after six months, in the new tumor developed. And now we are treating uh, just dendritic cell alone. Uh, maybe, it is, maybe good results will come out. Because, and uh, recently found, uh, pancreatic cancer is a very quick, uh, it is transformed and uh, you know, repeated. So if one time is treated by radiation, but less uh, surviving cancer cell, is changing the antigens. So after three months, six months, it's a CTL cannot work anymore. So that a new tumor is found and we are delivered in a dendritic cell and educate again and also in the CTL should be updated. Some kind of this uh, new method is uh, uh, there is some possibility to cure in the future uh, to going to uh, maybe complete remission. But uh, uh, up to now, it says uh, this diagnosis is very, very difficult for me. Thank you. Yes, we have uh, the lady up there. Um, hello. Um, I thank all the uh, panelists. Of <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'd like to thank all the panelists for a very fruitful um, forum. Uh, I'd like to ask Dr. Hasumi. Um, uh, the type of weapon that's being used by, you know, you mentioned about the tropes, they kill the tumor cells. And there's a very good paper published, I think, back in 2003 by a group um, in Harvard about CTL-mediated apoptosis. So do you think that's the case when it involves um, caspase-independent apoptosis? Or has there been any research being done as regards that? Thank you. Very difficult to translate. Say one more time. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I had a, uh, it's a sudden, sure. sudden deafness um, <laughs> it's, uh, uh, last year. So That's I'm sorry, sorry to, um, some little bit difficult to hear about that. Okay. I'm the sorry. only Japanese I know is Konnichiwa. So, um, These are in Japanese. <laughs> um, uh, the, the CTL, the mechanism that's being used to kill the tumor cells, yes. Is it caspase independent, you know, a different type of apoptosis? Yes, it's space. an alternative pathway. Caspase yes, so. independent, Katoka. Dependent. Oh. Apoptosis. Yeah. Um, it's a CTL. Uh, this is, uh, this CTL has a powerful the powerin is attached to yeah, 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 yeah. cancer cell and make a perforation. Bronzyme? Is that bronzyme? Pardon me? Oh, it's okay. Yeah. The Sorry. CTL attaches pemphorin and delivers its payload, which is gamma interferon. Sure, sure. Okay, that, thanks. And that causes apoptosis. So it's bronzyme A. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you so much. You must be an immunologist. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a molecular biologist, so... From UK Medical Molecular Biology Institute. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Yeah, as long as it it's kills, we are okay. As long as it kills your tumor cells. Um, yeah, um, Ganti Jin. Um, I noticed the inclusion criteria for the clinical trials uh, at UKM is for breast cancer patients who have not responded well to chemotherapy. Um, my question is actually more to uh, Dr. Hasumi and Dr. Bay. If a breast cancer patient comes to you, and I think from my basic understanding is that uh, the conventional treatment is quite successful for breast cancer treatment, um, would you recommend conventional treatment or HITV? We always uh, recommend... Be, be, before, before they started chemotherapy, that is. Early stage, stage one, stage two, breast mastectomy, very good result. Okay, so we tell the patient, you must undergo. I have two patients. I said, mastectomy has to be done. We want to remove the cancer stem cell. Both two patients are now in complete regression and they refuse to have the, mas the mastectomy. So for now, and they of course refuse chemotherapy for their personal reasons. Uh, for now, we just monitor closely. Yeah. But um, in theory, Dr. Hasmi's theory, we must remove the cancer stem cell. So the e best way, easiest way is to take out that cancer stem cell through mastectomy. Yeah. But in cases where we have a dilemma is when the cancer has regressed completely, do we still take out the breast? Dr. Nolia? Um, I think uh, in this case, because this is not standard treatment, so it's a bit difficult to, to be 100% sure. But if you were to consider that as part of uh, a trial, then obviously there will be an area where we don't know certain outcomes. But if the patient should choose to be, then I feel that we just need to closely monitor the patient and uh, do what is necessary as it goes along. Um, can I get a comment from maybe Dr. Hasumi or Dr. Bay? Uh, since this HITV treatment uh, is a vaccine, um, if the patient undergoes this treatment, um, is there a longer term positive implication, um, maybe 10 years down the road, that this uh, cancer may not recur? I, I would like want to make uh, one prediction. In 15 years' time, anybody gets cancer will have this vaccination process. That is, if the cancer is not too aggressive. And then, after the patient has been vaccinated, the immune system has been informed of the cancer, then do your conventional mastectomy treatment, whatever. The recurrences is probably going to be much, much less. There was a uh, analyst uh, from Citibank, and the, their prediction uh, is that this is the beginning of the end for cancer. Drug companies are pouring hundreds of billions of dollars into drugs which enhance the immune system or block some. Uh, cellular pathways or whatever and immunotherapy or immune system enhancing drugs is going to be the backbone of cancer treatment for 60% of cancers in 10 years time. This is a financial analyst who has studied all the drugs in the pipeline. So I think in 10-15 years time you'll find that yeah, we will do immunotherapy first and then, you know, combine with... You know, Dr. Hasmi has always said, this therapy is not to compete with other therapies. It is to unite so that we can provide the best possible benefit for the patient. Thank you. Yes, the gentleman over there. Hello. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, the panelists. My name is Ahmad. 
and my wife is um, stage four lung cancer. So I'm uh, seeking an advice. She recently, about two weeks ago, she had first chemo, and uh, left lung is already collapsed. Um, now she is uh, using oxygen, and also after the chemo, she is suffering from every day she has fever. She was, so she has to take Panadol. So what is your advice? Can uh, we follow up with your t kind of treatment? And what is the best advice you can give us? Thank you. But for Dr. Bay and Dr. I like to uh, the answer from Dr. Bay, also Dr. Hasumi. You know, basically, uh, this HITV should be combined with uh, radiation or chemotherapy. Uh, we should do a uh, dendritic cell alone into tumors. Because uh, if dendritic cell alone into tumors, it is uh, automatically producing the uh, CTL in the tumors. And then it is uh, between the cancer cell and uh, CTL, is a very strong reaction happens. So in the final, this tumor has and then get inflammation. And the inflammation is also leading to happens uh, cancer cell growth and transforms. So that if uh, any chemotherapy and any radiation therapy, it is not available. I think this uh, dendritic cell vaccine cannot use for some kind of this intratumoral uh, procedure is, I think it is not available. So we should think about another treatment, such as the um, NK cell uh, or the using a, a other immuno cell should be used, I think. So anyway, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I should say about and to very difficult to reach a complete remission. But uh, we should consider about and prolong survival using uh, other, other procedure uh, I, I recommend. So HITB should uh, always think about you know, what combined with uh, general treatment. So it is indication is uh, somewhat limited. So that you know, uh, this is uh, expanded in uh, immune cell, take out and take uh, isolated in the lymphocytes, peripheral lymphocytes, and expanded by CD3 and IL2. And these kind of are uh, called LAC therapy, lymphokine activated cell. Something like this uh, immune treatment is, I think, not bearable. But uh, and the, some kind of very strong reaction uh, that happens, some like in the HITV, uh, I think it is very carefully to use, I think. It's difficult to advise you because we don't have any information. Um, if you can share your PET CT results, blood results, etc., Dr. Hasmi will study and will tell you what we can or cannot do. Okay? Every patient is different. It's not a one pill cures all. Every patient is different. Thank you. Um, the gentleman up there, please. Good afternoon, Professor and uh, Doctor. Um, my name is Sam. I just want to ch um, ask um, all of you to uh, share with me if um, a cancer, a lung cancer patient who has been uh, tested negative for PDL1 according to the uh, cancer uh, biomarker test, and also if the patient has been uh, diagnosed with um, multiple tumor that has that, that measure less than one, one cm. Uh, yeah, I just want to find out if uh, a patient like that is actually suitable for this, this uh, immunotherapy uh, treatment. Okay, and also I just like to also uh, find out if there's any um, um, circumstances whereby this treatment is actually not uh, recommended for any patients with uh, lung cancer. I mean, just, just for sample. Thank you. 
<coughs> That's a long list of questions. Can you start from one by one? Sure. Okay, um, my first actually question is uh, for a lung cancer yeah, patient. Yeah, PDL one or no PDL one? Actually, yes, that is not PDL our one. criteria. Pardon? Okay, that's not a criteria. No, it's not a criteria. Because Thanks. we are just depending on a very natural human um, immune system, the way it works. We send the dendritic cell into the tumor, which is live cells. Live cancer cells have they are, they are not only just one PDL one. They are hundreds, maybe thousands of millions of different antigens that are there. So the dendritic cell does what it does naturally. It collects all the information and passes it. Maybe tons of information. We don't know. And the immune response happens and we get the result. That's what we know. Act more detailed study on you know all the processes and what kind of hypoptosis happening all that we will leave it to the immunologists the researchers and all that to find out what's happening dr hasmi is like you know an explorer he's gone and found oh there is gold there so he's telling the scientists the immunologists around the world i did it this way i found it now please design experiments and trials to validate to uh, find out what's happening. It, this is what the situation is now. Okay, so PDL1 uh, is one of those. Uh, I mean, it, we think, we believe that the, when we do the radiation, uh, it also removes the, the PDL1. Okay, second question. Yeah, so uh, the second question is on um, multiple tumors. They are actually less than like uh, one centimeter, could be as small as uh, five millimeters. Yeah, so if someone is actually, you know, uh, diagnosed with that, is that person still suitable for this uh, treatment? Is this a few or is thousands? Uh, multiples, yeah. It could be like, yeah, thousands, yeah, found in the lung. Chichai, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How about in uh, chemotherapy? And already done the first round and the second round already done? Down. Is it? Done the chemotherapy in this case? Um, no, the, the patient currently is just on uh, crystotonib at the moment. Yep. On what? Uh, crystotonib. Crystotonib is actually a drug. Okay. Yeah, it's a the oral, yeah. It's a targeted molecular therapy. Okay, uh, newly diagnosed, how long has it been? Uh, it has been diagnosed for like the last three months. We can give it a try. We cannot inject the two, three millimeters. Anything five centi millimeters to one centimeter, we can inject. So first of all, uh, we will start and uh, prepare the dendritic cell, and then uh, intravenous in administration, and uh, combined with chemo fast drying chemotherapy. So it applies all to one week starting uh, chemotherapy, and then we take cell in, uh, through intravenous. And then after one week, starting, starting chemotherapy. And the chemotherapy is uh, mainly in every three weeks in the, uh, administration. So each course attached with then we take cell and follow up three, uh, it's a three unit. And then we will evaluate the tumor size. And then it is disappeared some tumors, and still some tumor is raised. And then uh, we will uh, consider it if possible to combine with radi IMRT. Or another way is uh, direct injection of CTL. So it should be uh, make clear about, and this is some kind of a CAT scan images. So uh, I can say more clearly. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, I think we don't. Okay, last question. Hello. Uh, oh. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. Continue. Okay, no, go, go, go ahead. ahead. Hello. Uh, just one question. My name is Nor Anura. I'm a stage one B two cervical cancer. I've gone a complete a cycle of chemotherapy and radiotherapy. 
So when I uh, go through for the follow up, there will be a doctors uh, told me there will be a like two cm left on my tumor, uh, from on my cervical. So he suggests to get it removed by doing sort of like hysterectomy. So, but I'm still contemplating of doing it because of I was thinking if whether this HITV can help me to go to to do that whether without the to do the surgery. Uh, one was, question is yeah. already done in, in uh, is radiation made in this uh, pelvic area? Yeah. Uh, and chemotherapy, what kind of uh, cisplatin and fibroview? Yes, yeah, cisplatin and fibroview, uh, uh, full five cycle. And then and it's recurrent uh, lymph node in the in aortic lymph node or in uh, pelvic a, lymph node? It's a pelvic. It's a, exactly just one tumor left. Because other in the lymphomic nodes, I, everything is clear. Nothing, nothing. It's just one tumor left only. Uh -huh. Two cm. Excuse me. When, when treated in the radiation? Um, December last year. Last year, 2014, December. Uh, December. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So tumor size is the same or a little bit shrink or? Uh, previously diagnosed, it was seven cm. Now it reduced to 2 cm, around 2 cm. So just only four months now passed now. Yes. So we should take follow up uh, up to six months. Okay. Yeah. As may, may be, uh, the efficacy of radiation is, uh, it is come out a little bit later. Yeah. And if we consider about in the, uh, radiation into the same place, and uh, it should be avoided uh, as possible uh, with you can. But uh, uh, if still in the future uh, this lymph, lymph, lymph node is still there, and then we should consider about an uh, HITV. Okay. okay, I think we. Is that someone with a question? No, okay, I think... Uh, I have one question here? Yes. I yeah, I, uh, my name is Ang. I'm, uh, my mom uh, is age 74, and she's having breast cancer. The diagnosis was uh, localized, stage 2 to 3. Uh, uh, the, the doctors advised early on she was on uh, Femera for two months, but it doesn't help, and the doctor is advising us for chemo, but my mom's uh, as the dignity of uh, ladies, she doesn't want to be removed and she worried the process of chemo is a long process and then then have to uh, remove her breast and still have to have uh, on a long uh, uh, medications. So I just wonder whether this HITB will be helpful to her? I think so. I have... Uh some ex a few cases like that, and uh, they are all good so far. Uh, how long is the process if we were to on this? Uh... Take the cell culture, wait for two weeks, give an injection. Okay, a little bit of radiation on the tumor, one more injection. That's it. Three weeks. Then you will regress. Okay. Uh, but my mom. Uh, her result is uh, hers three plus. So is that? It's pro a very aggressive tumor. Uh, if she's not w willing to do chemotherapy, she's not willing to do mastectomy. Well, do something. Yeah, exactly. You know, whatever is not going to. Uh, make the quality of life poor, you know, with minimal side effect, minimal pain. Why not? Okay. Otherwise, you know, uh, we know that it's going to spread and it's going to get worse. Okay. May, may I know how much would be the cost for this whole process? We need to, I need to see her and evaluate, you know, uh, do a PET CT, find out whether it's only really localized or whether it's all over. And then, I send the data to Dr. Hasumi, 
and then he will come up with a strategy, and then I can advise you accordingly. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, sorry, but I can just suggest, sometimes there's a role of changing the endocrine treatment. If femara doesn't work, sometimes they might try and change to another one. Uh, one of the things that we try is aromacin or exomestain. So thank you um, to our panelists. Uh, is there one final question well, and then we're going to wrap up? Okay. I just want to, um, I'm Peter. I want to ask the panel, uh, Dr. Bay and, and uh, Dr. Norlina, if the, 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 the patients or the people who have cancer and they would like to become part of the clinical trial, um, what do they have to do? They have to approach HUKM. Um, I guess that's, that's the answer. I'm just apply to HUKM that I would like to take part in the clinical trial or at least to find out if I'm qualified to take part. Yeah, I'll be very happy to see any interested parties and then we can do the necessary screening and uh, if you're eligible, we'll be more than happy to include you in the trial. And for the patients who don't qualify and would like to take advantage of, of HITV, um, then they have to approach HITV. Is that, is that right, Dr. That's Bay right. or yeah. Professor Hasumi? And Dr. Bay is based in, in uh, Kuala Lumpur and Hasumi in Tokyo, so obviously Dr. Bay is the, the, per, the first line of approach anyway. Is that Yes, and, and, and the information will be submitted to Tokyo and Dr. Hasmi will study and come back with the recommendation. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody. It's been a really good session. So once again, I'd like to thank all our expert and esteemed panelists for sharing uh, uh, their thoughts with us. And we have... Um, uh, oh, we have a token of appreciation from Tourism Malaysia. So, I think, uh, who's going to give them out? Okay, I guess I give them out, <laughs> okay. Um, to uh, Dr. Hasumi, uh, arigato gremashtak. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your life's work and dedication to this um, uh, human-initiated therapeutic vaccine, the Hasumi uh, immunotherapy. Thank you. And to Professor Dr. Norlia, thank you for the work at UKM. And we're, we're very happy that UKM is partnering with, uh, with Japan, with Dr. Asumi, to further this research and, and treatment. And finally, yeah, to Dr. Bay, thank you for... It's, you need a team. Always the team will ensure the success. So everyone's very committed to this. One last word from me. I think... Dr. Hasumi deserves the Nobel Prize for this discovery. And I think he will get it. Thank you very much. And we hope so. We pray so. And so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for sharing your time with us. Uh, I'd like to invite you to some refreshments outside, and you may catch up with our panelists outside as well. Terima kasih, and uh, have a safe journey home. <laughs>